if you're feeling too comfortable, it's not a good sign. Just get out and feel not comfortable again. This is the Creative Voyage Podcast, a long-form interview show with the mission to help creative professionals level up. I'm your host, Mario De Picolzuane. I'm a creative professional myself, active in the fields of graphic design, art direction, and creative consulting, working with companies such as Skinfolk, Menu, and Sonos. Through season one of this podcast, I present in-depth interviews with some of the world's most inspiring creative professionals, revealing the stories that shape their lives and careers, plus actionable strategies to help you take your mindset and skills to the next level. I invite you to join me on this journey. This episode is dedicated to photography and to one of my favorite photographers working today. My name is Jacopo Moskin. I'm an Italian photographer. I'm 30 years old, currently living in New York. I work between the United States and Europe most of my time. Besides being a photographer, I also have a production agency where we produce content for fashion brands and just lifestyle brands in general, where I act more as a creative director or producer. So I'm also in charge of hiring other photographers and other creatives for different projects. Jacopo's work has been featured in ID, Vogue, Amica, Financial Times, L, and he worked for clients such as Bali, Levi, Dolce & Gabbana, Ann Taylor, Dior, Louis Vuitton, and others. I find his work authentic and poetic, and his images often have a certain depth and an almost classic dimension to them. I've been following Jacopo's work for a while now, and I've also had a pleasure of working with him on one of the editorial projects for Kinfolk.com in 2017. So it was an amazing opportunity to connect with him in this context as well. In this episode, we're going to listen to the highlights of the conversation I had with Jacopo in August of 2018. We cover topics such as his work routines, dangers of the comfort zone, main challenges of being a photographer today, understanding who you are and what photography is about, the importance of research, his advice for briefs coming from art directors, and much more. Jacopo has been working professionally for over nine years, but his interest in the field started much earlier, when he got a small film camera, Pentax MX, from his father, which he still owns and loves today. It's possible that that was one of the determining factors which led him to take a photography course while he was studying at a Catholic university in Milan. At the time, the photography lab was run by William Willington, one of the classic photographers who believed in the heritage approach which came from the likes of Henri Cartier-Bresson, Robert Capa, Sebastião Salgado, and what Jacopo would call a pure approach to photography. Here he reflects about some of the most important things he learned during that time. You know, sometimes when you're young and you want to experiment so much, you kind of forget about what photography is all about, really. You forget about the essence of it because you because you're so excited about it that you you might focus too much on technique and yeah. forget what what the essence of photography really is. The fact that somebody's in front of you, the fact that you're almost like you're capturing a moment which is a true life moment but you're turning into something that it could also be not a real representation of what is really in front of you so there were a lot of ethical questions especially on advertising photography because that that was what my major uh yeah. in where they you know the images were real images of people but then they were manipulated and then all sorts of layers that came into play in that sense and i think it's great to have a very grounding it was great to have a very grounding education in mm -hmm. the sense that it really helped us think more about the great photographers work like robert kappa you know like war photographers and then what does it mean to be a photographer that goes on in the streets and take photos of like random people in the streets the way you yeah. could approach them all the questions uh, around it like are you stealing their images are you using their images is it like to your advantage is it to their advantage and what are the limits and yeah. what are the creative limits of it and then so many really less technical questions the, the technique was not really the focus of the course it was more about why do you take photos and what are you trying to say you know like what's the message behind it and sometimes it's so easy to just forget these type of topics when you when you focus too much on technique yeah and that's often the case in, in university 
to just like go from project to project without actually knowing why are you doing it. Yeah. And then you just finish and you're lost and you're just like, what is this all about? Yeah. So this sounds like a really good course that you had. Yeah. And I think you, you don't really necessarily have to study photography in order to be a photographer. I mean, you can literally learn by working in the industry, by being an assistant. But it, I, I think it's far more important to have an education in like any other like topic, like any other subject, like literature, history, ethics, psychology, and all of that. Like even reading books. I mean, that that's, I would say for a photographer, it's great advice to read books and stories and learn about storytelling and, and message and, and all of that. For an inexperienced practitioner, it can be a daunting mission to start working professionally in a photography field. It can seem like everything has been done before, and there's an obvious abundance of visual content out there. At the same time, there are more and more people joining the profession. I was curious to hear what advice would Jacopo give to a new talent entering into this creative field. I think it's very important to think photography in a different way than how I thought about photography 10 years ago, because the industry has changed so much um, mm -hmm. with social media, with, um, you know, things like Instagram and all of that. And then, like, I, I realized that a lot of photographers are really struggling to find their identity because almost everything has been done. So it's easy to get lost in the stream of images. And it's easy to look at like some photographers are producing so many images per day that it's really easy to get lost. And I think yeah. for a young photographer starting out, you may, you know, like the excitement of the first assignments would make them feel would make them feel bad if they don't get other assignments and bigger assignments over and over. And I think that's not a great way to start because you will feel like there are months where you, you might not get assignments and, and that will make you feel really bad. So you have to learn and find a balance in your work. Like you really have to sit down and think about who you want to be in like five years or 10 years and what okay. kind of photographer do you want to be? Do you want to, you know, like be published in a New York Times magazine or do you want to be like an art photographer that works with like a gallery and does mm -hmm. like exhibitions and prints? Or do you want to be a photographer that specifically works in the fashion industry? Um, and sometimes when you're young, it's really hard to, to know yourself. Um, when I started, I thought I wanted to be specifically a fashion photographer. And then that kind of changed to as I grew up too. So I think it's a work that it's so connected with your personal life and who you are. Yeah. That, are, that the best advice I would I would give is to really sit down and, and think about who you are and who you want to be in a few years. And that will help you decide the people you want to approach, the kind of work you want to do. And everything really starts from a portfolio. And, and the portfolio is what you show other people and what tells who you are to other people. So if you, yeah. if you meet a, a photo editor, they'll look at your portfolio and, that, and it's, they'll have a sense of who you are and what kind of um, story you want to tell. Yeah. So the, it, personal work is so important. Uh, I don't believe that unless you want to be one of those really big advertising photographers that work on like car advertisements and stuff like that. I think it's about putting together so much personal work that the people you present the work to, they will realize who you are and then they'll hire you for that. So I think that's, that's the best advice I would, I would give. A work of a professional photographer or any creative takes much more than merely doing the activity which is implied by the title. I was interested in hearing what makes Jacopo's workday, both the pleasurable and those less pleasurable parts of it. Well, there is a, a bunch of activities that you have to do over and over. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's about spending three hours sending emails, answering emails, and, you know, getting the production work done, which could be maybe spending like 30 minutes on thinking like what to rent for the next production or yeah. talking to your assistants and, and what kind of lighting setup are you going to do for a specific client. And then some days it will be more about looking at images, uh, choosing images and following post-production processes. And some days it will be a lot more about researching. So I love researching. It's something that I never stopped doing since I started. And I think it's one of the actually the most enjoyable part of the entire process because you get to learn so much you get to see so many images you get to save them and you get to think about what you want to do next yeah and i find it's particularly amusing when you're thinking about your personal work and then you look at some other photographer's work and you're like wow this was such a great idea and then why did i not think about it and then how can i improve this idea 
you know, sometimes it's hard to just like innovate. So I don't think people and photographers, young photographers should be afraid of sort of copying other photographer styles mm -hmm. in a certain way, because that will lead them to learn and eventually find their own path. Yeah. It's it just really hard to just innovate from nothing from scratch if you're a young photographer, because you might not know about a lot of things. So you still need to learn and grow. So researching is definitely one of the most time consuming activities because you might spend like three, four hours and it could be you could just go to a bookshop and learn through books or you yeah. can just go on the Internet and just surf the Internet. What I love about just surfing online is that there are so many images and it's so easy to research photographers in general and, and mm -hmm. old works as well. You start from somewhere and you end up in a totally different place. And then in this process, you realize so many things. And then some days, obviously, it's really like the set work. So you wake up early, you go on set, and then uh, you just work until seven. And then you go home and you have a glass of wine and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you said that research is probably the most fun part of it. Yeah. What's maybe your least favorite part about the whole uh, profession? <laughs> I have no doubt about it. For me... <laughs> It's it's for sure archiving. Okay. And then uh, I'm really bad at doing that. And uh, unfortunately, I think it has something to do with the fact that everything is digitalized nowadays. I think I would have a lot more fun organizing my archive if it was only film because yeah. it's so practical. You have your hands involved, you have boxes and things like that. And yeah. I, I find that more, in a way, more amusing than just scrolling through a bunch of folders and like renaming files. Luckily, I have an assistant who helps me with that because he knows I'm really, really bad. And I find that part extremely boring. Sometimes it's also updating the portfolio. Uh, updating portfolios for a photographer, it's like a snake uh, changing skin. <laughs> In a way, you're happy, you're growing and you're changing images, but you always have so many doubts of what you're putting in and putting out. So you're yeah. like, am I, you know, showing new images? Sometimes you don't really have to show new images, but it's like, are these images really representing myself? Yeah. What are people going to think when they see these images? It's, it's a lot of questions and sometimes it's a struggle to just like update a portfolio. And yeah. again, it, everything is digitalized. <laughs> all these files <laughs> you know uh, I wish we could still shoot film and have maybe 40, 50 images per set and be yeah. happy with them and now we have 3,000 sometimes yeah. and you just don't want to go through all of them <laughs> In large part due to the disruptive nature of technology, what it means to be a photographer today is rapidly changing. I've asked Jacopo to share what he thinks are the main challenges of being a professional photographer. There's two questions that are problematic, I think, for photographers nowadays. The first question is the overproduction of images. And the second is the pace of the production of images. Images are produced and they're posted on Instagram same day or the day after. So there is, you kind of lose a lot of control in that process. Yeah. And so I think these two topics are really problematic for photographers because sometimes they feel like they're just producing images without a reason almost. So I think a lot of young photographers are starting to do that. And then after two years or three years, they're like, they feel a little bit empty. Mm -hmm. because they don't know they don't know what's next really they are like um i don't know if this is what i signed for when i when i decided i wanted to be a photographer yeah you know you kind of like lose yourself in the process you're just basically creating images but then you're like am i happy with these images am i not happy there is no edit you know it's it's just like so much that gets produced yeah yeah okay. it's a bit of a struggle yeah it's, it's like a photography treadmill yeah and i think it's, it's it's not just for young photographers i mean it's even for the for the big names and some of them who came from a very different world felt a little bit lost about the pace and the environment everything is democratic on instagram in a way you might have an amazing peter Lindbergh um, image from the 90s that you know took so long to be shot not just because of you know the technical environment maybe there was a supermodel involved and there was like an entire set of people on the beach and like it was like a four day shoot where you know you really get to know the people around you you really get to have a personal relationship with whoever you're taking photos of whether she's an actress or a musician or whatever and then that image sits next to an image that has been you know shot in two seconds and it's very hard to define the quality of it you know yeah. so i think everything is very democratic which is good because it opens up so many opportunities for young people to start and produce images but at the same yeah. time it raises a question on who is in charge of defining what's important and what's not important or what's valuable and what's not how do you navigate those aspects is there a way when you work with clients that you 
position yourself to get as much control as you can and is there like a way that you try to do that maybe through your approach your proposals it's it's always trying to have a conversation with the client before the job always helps you know like having a very clear conversation i think the more you grow as a photographer the more clients will hire you because of your vision and your portfolio again it's very essential in that because they will see something in your portfolio that's like oh this is really telling my story you know it's very pleasing to me if you have like a very confusing portfolio Portfolio, they might just hire you because you know how to take pictures yeah. and that is the very big difference over there it's like you don't want to get hired just because you know how to take pictures just because you can shoot a headshot and get the right exposure if you start that way then everything becomes really technical and the clients won't really hire you for who you are so you have to get to the point where you will tell them like this is who i am this is how i shoot and uh, this is what I believe into. And that if that yeah. aligns with your brand, then we can tell a story together. And then this is how I think your story should be told and how many images we should produce. And obviously with clients, there is a commercial aspect. So they have to produce a certain number of images. They have to promote their products and all of that. But at the same time, I always find the best partnerships are where the client really respect the photographer. Yeah and then really listen to the photographer so that the photographer feels like motivated to just give the clients more yeah. because otherwise as a photographer you just want to you know wrap at five and go home because you're not as excited about what you're doing and yeah. it, that doesn't help the photographer it doesn't help the client it doesn't help anybody you know so I think it's a matter of education to for the client like they need to be educated from the photographer before the job yeah. and they need to be told like this is what I do and this is why I think this is great you know like that's why the message is so important when you build your portfolio because that's a story you want to tell to your clients as well. You want to tell them, I really believe in no makeup. You know, that's who I am. Like, I don't like makeup. And then you are not going to work with every single client, of course. So you have to be selective of that. But at the same time, the clients you will work with, they will want to book you like six times, seven times. And you will build lasting relationships over very quick and technical exchanges. There's another crucial element, which is often a source of struggle for professional photographers. And that's making enough money to earn yourself a living. Here, Jacopo shares his thoughts on that. Definitely, the, the whole industry has changed so much. And I think it's, for some young photographers, it's hard to navigate because they don't know how to position themselves and how not to be taken advantage of. Obviously, having an agent does help, especially at the beginning, because you don't know the dynamics. But I think sometimes once you learn the dynamics, once you, you know, you have an enough experience you could also work by yourself without having an agent you might just want to maybe have a manager or a very good assistant or a very good accountant but uh, reality is if you're starting out sometimes people will take advantage of you just because you don't know how to position yourself but that's not always bad because if you're a young photographer you might not be as good and then that might be an opportunity for you because you're getting a job uh, yeah. and that job will help you get out of jobs and, and grow and like learn that so if you're a very young photographer and you're starting and then you're saying I'm only shooting four images because that's what I'm getting paid for and um, I want to have three years licensing rights or whatever, most of the clients will just run away um, and they won't hire you. Yeah. <laughs> a combination of things you really have to learn the dynamics you really have to learn how to position yourself how much is your cost and you get you, normally you you get paid like a fee a daily fee or you get paid per image and then there are costs that are associated with image productions which are rights of usage and that depends on where your images are going to be if it's an editorial for a magazine if it's a commercial work or advertising work it's more and then nowadays i don't think it's essential to have an agent anymore i think a lot of agencies are actually struggling because it's so easy for clients to just reach out to photographers themselves they, they see their work on instagram and they just send them private like i get dms all the time from people and clients that want to work with me so i think if you have a lot of jobs it's obviously helpful to have a manager that helps you scheduling and like meetings and negotiating and gets the the legal stuff out of the way too because you have to be protected you want to make sure that you have good conscience in place for the images you produce yeah. I heard stories of photographers producing images for like $2,000 and then seeing their images on major ads in the world, <laughs> like yeah. on Times Square. And that's shady. We would like to think people wouldn't do that, but it happens. So you have to get protected in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously a good accountant too does help. 
Because sometimes when you're a young photographer, you have to take on costs such as post-production, paying your assistants, paying equipment up front. Yeah. So having a good cash flow is also important. You, you want to make sure that you are, you're able to sustain yourself for two months until you get paid. Because sometimes clients won't give advances or stuff like that. Besides working as a photographer, you're also a partner in a production and content agency, November 87. Can you tell me a bit more about that? It started as a production agency because of how many images are produced today. The idea came from the fact that brands today, they're, they're in need of so many images. And sometimes it's easy to get lost in the stream of it. I really wanted to offer clients the possibility of producing images that are meaningful, that were not just beautiful, but they really sent a message somehow. And they were really aligning with the brand values of the clients. Mm -hmm. And I also love the idea, again, this is, I think, because the photographer's role has changed so much that I like the idea of the photographer being more of an image maker than just a simple photographer. Yeah. You know, sometimes on set, we shoot stills, but we shoot, like, we, we film as well. We produce short videos, we produce longer videos, longer, longest features. You know, sometimes brands would need, like, a lookbook, but they would also need images for their social media channels. They would need, you know, it could e they could even need, like, boomerangs or like Instagram images. Yeah, so yeah. I like the idea of a photographer who's able to be in charge of a lot of these aspects. Some photographers could feel snobbish about Instagram and they would think looking at a boomerang, looking at uh, images for Instagram is not really that elevating. Could be frustrating for some people. It's really not frustrating to me because I feel like Instagram is just another medium magazines have less importance nowadays and instagram gets a lot of eyeballs and that that's where people go for image content so you kind of have to embrace that if you want to be a, an image maker in general yeah. so we can't really avoid that part i think and that's why the agency helped me be in charge of more of the image production in general do you have more people with you or how is it structured yeah there's another two guys working with me on the company so it's three people total freelancers of course and are you all creators like photographers and such or is it more like manager type people it's more like manager type and then everything is project based and that was part of the idea of really give our clients a customized experience so we hire other people depending on the project that's also really fun for me again this goes back to being true to who you are as a photographer I can't take on projects that are not aligned with me. I rather work with like another great talent that mm -hmm. does things better than me in that sense or yeah. that's better for that client than, than myself. And that helps my mental stability too. Because if I work with a client that is really not right for me, I much prefer to hire somebody else that works well for that client. Yeah. That makes yeah. the client happy. Um, I'm happy to give the job to another talent, help that talent grow. And at the same time, I don't feel frustrated at the end of the day because I've done something that's not me. Yeah. So I think it, it's a win for everybody, really. Hey, friends. You're listening to the Creative Voyage podcast. We are roughly in the middle of this episode, so it's time for a short break. There's no team behind this show. It's solely produced and edited by me, Mario. I don't have any sponsors, and I have no plans to add any. Nevertheless, I can use all the help I can get growing the show. If you like what you've heard so far, there's three simple things you can do for me and future episodes. Number one, review the show on Apple Podcasts. Number two, tell a friend and share a link on social media. And number three, visit the shop on creative.voyage slash shop and support the show by buying bespoke Creative Voyage products. Thanks, everyone. Let's get back to the show. Growth seems to be a crucial factor of long-term career success and personal satisfaction. I wanted to hear how Jacopo manages that part of his career. I really think that's the hardest part because it's such a growing process and the more you learn, the more you realize you, you were doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And the more you learn that also, the more you get inspired. And it's kind of like having a lot of options where you need to decide what options you are, you know, what, who you are. Yeah. And then that's why I do so much research because it really helps me refocus. Because sometimes I like something, but I realize I just like it for a moment. Or sometimes I like something because it's great. But then even though it's great, and even though I admire it, it's not me. And then I'm like, okay, so this is somebody else's amazing job. But it's yeah. really not what I would love to do. 
So it's kind of a struggle, to be honest, to reposition yourself all the time. And again, I think it's really the more you learn, the more you see, the more you read. It's everything culturally relevant that helps you. Reading books, watching movies, watching series, reading about tech, any kind of topic, even reading news, really. You know, some of the best Stephen Meisel's editorial for the Italian Vogue, they were based on news stories. So it's really about keeping yourself aware culturally. It could even be just like surf on Tumblr. I love yeah. surfing on a few Tumblr that I always follow and I get so many inspirations out of that. And then I go back and I'm like, okay, maybe this was not something that uh, that was really me. So maybe I should, you know, work in a different way or try a different medium, different tools yeah. and so on. Would you say is that the thing that you're struggling the most or is there something else? Do you have any other challenges currently in front of you? Yeah, I would say that's one of the biggest challenge always. I think I'm doing a decent job on that, but uh, there's always a lot of space to improve. Another challenge that I think is giving me a little bit of stress is the fact that I'm sometimes I'm producing too much. And I like the idea of slowing down in the future mm -hmm. and produce less and less and be more selective with the images that I put out there. I think that's not just a personal feeling, but uh, I think a lot of people are feeling this way, but they haven't processed it yet. Mm -hmm. And again, I think it has to do with the fact that we're seeing so many images. And then Susan Sontag, who's a, an amazing writer and a photography critic, she already said that a few years ago when she said, like, there is so much image production in the world nowadays that mm -hmm. no one's going to be able to edit that. And photographers are going to feel like empty yeah. because why do we need to shoot more images we do have enough you know <laughs> and yeah. why are we producing more so my struggle is really slowing down and then do more relevant meaningful work that can tell a story that can send a message and that can lead people to think better about certain topics i think it's virtually impossible to grow if we are staying in our comfort zone in the icarus deception which is one of my favorite books about being a creator today, Seth Godin asks, what do you do when your comfort zone and safety zone are no longer the same? For example, remaining in a job that's no longer challenging might be comfortable, but it's actually not safe because you're falling behind your peers. Here's Jacopo's thoughts about that theme. It's easy to get stuck in your comfort zone once your career as a photographer takes off a little bit and that happened to me when before i moved to the united states it happened to me because i was in a really good comfort zone where i had an agent who was providing good jobs for me and basically good money jobs mm -hmm. so i was making you know i wasn't becoming rich but i was making a good amount of money and i could sustain myself and i was happy of just being a photographer but then after a few years i got to the point where i realized all these jobs that i was doing they were not making me happy in any way and they were not helping me grow so you know i was maybe financially stable but i was going nowhere really yeah so then the big investment for me was getting out of my comfort zone that really pushes you more and pushes you to discover yourself I split with my agent and we decided not to work together anymore. I had an open conversation with them and I said, I don't think this is doing any good for me. And um, it's just bringing in business, but it's business that's not relevant. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that helped me a lot. Yeah. So keeping an eye open outside of your comfort zone, I think really helps. When did you move to United States and why? That was six years ago. I think it was more of a life decision. It wasn't really like a career move. Yeah. I got to the point where I was a little bit tired of being in Europe. And, uh, you know, I've been traveling to the U U.S. for a long time, but I never tried to live actually in the U.S. I was 25 years old and I thought it was a good time to try it out, see if I liked it and to see if that would help my career as well. And I'm happy I did it because I learned a lot of new things that I might not have learned if I stayed in the same place. Right now, I'm kind of feeling the same way because I got to the point where I'm growing into a comfort zone again. So I'm wondering what's next in my life that makes me go out of that comfort zone again. Yeah. It, sometimes it's good to be in a, in a difficult position and the comfort doesn't really help. It's not easy to let comfort go at the same time because you're, you feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's one of the best advices I could give, but this is not just for photographers. I think it's for everybody. If you're feeling too comfortable, it's not a good sign. Just get out and feel not comfortable again. Yeah, I think that's yeah that that's really important. That's where the growth happens, and basically in that process you feel alive and satisfied. Yeah, usually. I think you know you 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 have a challenge. You have a challenge. You have someone to be new things to explore. Comfort really doesn't help. 
it's great to have, but I think in life, it's always about the journey and not the end goal. And I think once you get to the comfort, that's your end goal. So you have to get out of that again and start again the journey and the process. That's where the fun is. Yeah, it seems like with some other things, you're self-aware of that. But does that come naturally to you? It's your, let's say, a character trait? Or did you have to like learn that? I'm not sure if it's a character trait. I think I had to learn that the hard way. And then once I did it, and I realized it was better for me, I realized it was also like a good life advice. And mm. uh, it's not easy. It's actually the opposite. It's, it's so easy when you're in the comfort zone to just be like, why would I want to step out again? Why would I want to do something different? It just feels good here at the moment. And I think that's always when I want to push out of it because I, I sense that something is wrong in, the, in that environment. I think for everybody, just think about yourself. And if you feel like you're in too much of a comfort zone, you're probably secretly not so happy about that. And you're looking for challenges. Exactly. That zone is comfortable, but you do start feeling that itch, that unease. It's always somewhere at the back of your mind. Exactly. It might be good to be in a comfort zone for a little bit of time once you get there. Because, I mean, yeah. everybody needs to rest and everybody deserves to be at peace, you know, sometimes and be like, okay, I'm just going to enjoy this moment. But then it could be as easy as traveling somewhere for two weeks by yourself. Yeah. I always suggest traveling by yourself sometimes. You see a lot of things and you learn about different cultures, but you really get to learn a lot about yourself as well in the same time. Even if our career is generally satisfying, that doesn't free us from making mistakes, encountering obstacles, or simply having those hard days. But still, as professionals, we have to execute on our promises. I was curious to hear how Jacopo manages those situations. When I'm facing big challenges, I try to step back a little sometimes and then think about what am I doing wrong, why this is happening to me, and then push back harder. I think part of my character is sort of like not giving up on difficulties and try to learn and understand why certain things are not working. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, though, you're banging at the wrong door. And I learned that the hard way because, again, because mm -hmm. I'm a stubborn uh, <laughs> person and I don't want to give up. I don't see why certain things are not working, but it really is because you're banging at the wrong door. And maybe that's not what you also want to do. Sometimes we get sidetracked by our own ambitions, especially nowadays. I think ambitions of, you know, it could be like fame or it could be like power positions or respect positions because we want other people's respect. Yeah. We want other people to know that we're doing good and, you know, our career is doing really well. But sometimes those are not really the values. The real value is stepping back and, and realizing if what you're doing is making you happy. And then if there is any struggle in your life, whether it's personal or professional, what is causing it and why? And kind of like analyze yourself and realize that you have to, I think this is for everybody. It's again, you have to do things that make you happy, no matter what. If it's a job, you have to do a profession that's inspiring mm -hmm. to you. And then it's not just giving you a paycheck. Yeah. So you might love the idea of a glamorous photographer world. You might want to be there, but deep down, you, you might not be that person that wants to do that. For example, I realized I'm not interested in being like a super fancy, glamorous photographer that goes to all the cool parties or the cool dinners and all of that. I prefer to like step back and maybe work in a more introspective way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're too close to certain struggles, when you're too close to problems, you don't really get to focus on them properly. So stepping back, you see them in their entirety and then you're more able to fix them. Yeah. If you're having problems traveling for two weeks, three weeks to a different place, it might help you refocus on why you're having, why you're living these struggles. Mm -hmm. And then again, if it's personal, I think everybody reacts differently. I really think you can find comfort in reading other people's stories, reading books. And I, I feel like it's always best not to be afraid to ask for help if you need any. Yeah. Even sometimes reaching out to people you admire. Sometimes I feel like people are afraid of reaching out to people they admire. But even sending an email to somebody asking for advice and suggestions. Sometimes I get emails from really young photographers or like mm -hmm. students and they just want a piece of advice. And it's just so easy to give it to them. At the time of this recording... Around 50% of my creative work revolves around art direction. However, I started my career primarily as a graphic designer, and I haven't done almost any proper art direction until I've worked at Kingfolk magazine. So art direction is something I got into and still learning on the job. Since I lack a traditional education on the topic, somewhat selfishly, 
I've used this chance to ask Jacopo what for him as a photographer constitutes a good brief from an art director. I like that the art direction is clear, like, you know, we're going for this vibe and they're going for my photography, but they're not setting the shots up for me. I think it's very frustrating for photographers when certain art directors try to tell them how to set up a shot or, you know, they send them images of like, we would really love an image like this. And they send a specific photo. Mm -hmm. For some photographers, it's helpful. And for some commercial work, it's also helpful because it gives them like a good trace, like a good starting point. Yeah. But I always feel like it, you're kind of like really copying a shot and it, you're never going to get at the same level. Normally, good art directors, they don't do this, but sometimes you could get a brief of images that don't really make much sense. Like I get a brief with, with the mood board of like really beautiful images from the 90s with like Kate Moss and Christy Turlington. And uh, it's a bunch of different black and white images that don't really make any sense. And then for a photographer, when you receive these kind of briefs, like you look at them and you'd be like, okay, and then you move on because it doesn't really, it's not <laughs> helping us in any way. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes it's just like, yeah, these are beautiful timeless images like you know they send me these shots from k moss from Corinne day or you know bruce weber peter Lindbergh, and then you look at it and you're like wow this is amazing and you know it's beautiful it's the essence of photography really but then you want me to replicate this shot of like naomi campbell in a bathtub with a glass of champagne it's never going to look like that. We can't reproduce that image, you know, like we have to go our own way to produce something amazing. You know, yeah. we can't just like put a model in a bathtub with a glass of champagne. She just look at you <laughs> and be like, what am I doing in here? You know, <laughs> yeah. the thing about photography is you have to create an entire world around it. Like yeah. that image, like it probably everybody on set was drinking. Everybody was having fun. And somebody said like, oh, why don't you go in the bathtub? You know, and then she was drinking champagne and she was in a happy mood and the whole energy on the set was good for that shot yeah. and when you try to replicate that and sometimes i get these briefs i'm like guys i get it but this is <laughs> it's a bit childish it's it's not gonna look yeah. like that <laughs> you have to give me something deeper to work with as an art director i think and do you like in those cases say like push back or suggest something else or how do you manage that <laughs> it depends on the client and depends oh, on the, on the okay. art director I, again, um, normally very good art directors don't do this. They know that they need to provide me with guidelines that make sense for me as a photographer. Yeah. They might tell me like, you know, we really want harsh like shadows and we want to work underexposed and kind of be moody. And they can provide me like with three, four ref photographers reference names and maybe provide like a movie reference and tell me a little bit more about this story. But I think the job of a good art director is also to hire the right photographers. Yeah. Why would they send me a very specific brief when they can just hire somebody else that fits their image? So I think that's also an important part of it. Like you can hire like very technical car photographer and pretend that he's going to be like shooting Peter Lindbergh images. It's yeah. it's just not a match. You have to respect photographer's identity. We've come to the very end of the conversation I had with Jacopo. I aim to wrap up every episode with some form of actionable or inspirational advice from my guests. Here's three wonderful closing insights Jacopo shared with me. First advice I would give is get to know yourself in every possible way, because I, every creative job requires a deeper understanding of yourself and what you like in life. I think the best cases of creative people, whether it's an architect or a photographer or an artist, a musician, is when they really get to know what's their place in the world and mm -hmm. what they stand for. And that's for sure advice number one. Because creative jobs are so connected with who you are and how you express yourself, yeah. that you, the more you learn about yourself as a person, the better will be your outcome at work. And the second one will be if you're a photographer, do not just look at photography. Go out and um, experience different creative environments and try different things. And as a photographer, you can get inspired by design. You can get inspired by architecture again, by music, by, by movies. All creative fields are connected. Yeah. You know, obviously, it's kind of like when you're working on a movie, you have moving images, uh, you have photography, you have, you know, storytelling you have sound, you have visually appealing images, you have locations. So I think you kind of have to approach creative like that. So the more you yeah. know about other creative fields, the better you'll be at your job and the better you'll perform in general. Like if you grow knowledgeable about everything, 
and um, you try to always constantly update yourself on different topics, Mm -hmm. the more you'll be able to have a good conversation with other creative people who will ultimately enrich your life or your creative career. It's, it's hard to be a good photographer if you only know about photography. Yeah. The last advice I would give is probably do not get overly frustrated with failures and mistakes and challenges and people refusing your work because it's a long journey. And um, even when you'll be 50 years old and very established, you will still experience refusal. For some people, it's hard to overcome difficulties because they feel overwhelmed or they feel like they're not enough. But that's not really the case. In these fields, you just have to listen. And then sometimes sometimes you're just not ready for those things yet. You might, you might feel frustrated. You might feel like, why? Because you, feel, you think the work is good enough. But uh, it's actually, you, there is always an opportunity behind that. And then it's a growing opportunity. So I think actually... You should be happy about mistakes and failures because they will grow you stronger. Like you, if you start your career and then you have all the doors open and you get to the top without having problems, something is wrong. (laughs) Something is really, really wrong. (laughs) So I think all the problems are really big opportunities for you. And if you get yourself to that mindset where you're, where you know that you're not going to give up and you're not going to say yes to failure, that's a good mindset to have. Just don't feel frustrated about it. This door is not opening at the moment. I'm just going to go right and try this other door. And if not, I'm going to move back and try something different. It's really about not getting frustrated. It's okay to, to be wrong. It's okay to do, do mistakes. And actually, that's, that's the best way to learn. That's the best way to grow. For everybody at home keeping score, I believe we touched on a lot of useful information for anybody out there interested in photography, art direction, and developing as creative professionals. I want to thank Jacopo for coming onto the show. He's an inspiring creative, and I've learned a lot just by talking with him for less than two hours. Links to Jacopo's work, his Instagram, as well as to some other things mentioned during our conversation can be found in the show notes at creative.voyage slash podcast. You can follow at creative.voyage on Instagram and you can also email me directly on hello at creative.voyage. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and until next time, my friends, take care.